Morning at the Go. My name is Nathan Prater, I'm the wine manager. Uh, I'm here with my good friend Robin Bond. We are going to be doing a short feature on the wines that were included in this month's November newsletter, um, a concept or a good deal we're calling the Magnificent Seven. Uh, it is a pairings program with wine based on what to do for Thanksgiving. So why don't we start? Um, there are, like I said, seven wines and they run the gambit between sparkling, two high acid whites, a lovely dry rosé, two reds, and then a sweet wine. So we're covering the world of wine, or uh, styles of wine, uh, in, in, in seven different unique wines. Um, there's a lean towards France because I'm a huge Francophile, but we are representing France, Italy, Germany, and California in the seven wines. Right. So the first product is uh, the wonderful Francois Monton, um, sparkling wine, uh, made with the exact same process as you find with champagne, secondary bottle fermentation, it's not from Champagne, France. Um, uh, Mr. Monton uh, produces and sources fruit from all over France. So this is actually classified uh, as Vins Musso. Uh, you wouldn't know about it unless somebody told you about it, but these are the hidden gem sparklers of France. So you can see, uh, you can see that you get a level, a lovely what we call mousse, which is that frothy bubble profile, but a little bit smaller bubbles, not quite as refined as you get in champagne, uh, but very, very fresh, bright and crisp. And there's lots of apple and melon, a little peachiness, brut, which just means not sweet, and what's known as a blanc de blanc style of white format. There's only white grape shoes. This is going to be a chin and blanc, a chardonnay, and a grape blanc and blanc blend. So cheers. So that was the sparkling wine. As you can see, light, bright, crisp, apple green melon, very, very easy drinking, lovely bubbles. Wine number two uh, is the wonderful uh, Gis Sague. This is the La Petite Perrier 2008 Sauvignon Blanc. Um, had the fortune of tasting this wine uh, at a wine lunch over at Chez Nou and spent time with Mr. Sague's son. Um, this is a beautiful expression of Sauvignon Blanc. Um, we're familiar with California Fumé Blanc. We're familiar with New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc, Sancerre Pui Fumé. This particular bottling is a sourcing of fruit from different parts of, of, of France. So it, it doesn't quite get the same narrow geographic designation. For instance, like Champagne, like Bordeaux. Um, this has a wonderful uh, lighter grapefruit. A little peachy, softer, rounder, but great acid, good minerality slices through anything rich. Your mashed potatoes, crispy green bean casserole, beautiful cranberry sauce. That's great if you do a deep fried turkey. Or if you even have, have a smoked ham, it's a beautiful one. Now I'm going to take you to Germany. Uh, and this is one of my personal favorite producers. This is Weingut St. Urbantov. Um, even the name pays homage to quality. Um, St. Urban is the patron state of winemakers in Germany. And then Hof really means a state in German. Um, Wonderful vintage of 2010. Most people, when you say Germany, they tend to freak out and panic. The wines are just sweet. Yes, there are wonderful sweet wines made in Germany. This is a beautiful example of Alphara. Uh, there is a touch of sweetness, but wonderful minerality. Uh, delicious, delicious citrus fruits, fresh lime, lemon, green apple, a wonderful hint of nectarine and kiwi, and then just beautiful, bright acid. Uh, what, also, what also is nice about this one is also a state bottle. So you're talking about uh, production that controls uh, berry to bottle. They're driving the bus, they're in charge. Wow, so it's a beautiful great. expression. Now we're going on to a personal favorite. Um, uh, I always say that real men, real men drink rosé. Um, most often this color association is uh, we tend to think of sweet because you think of white Zinfandel or white Merlot, which is, is not an uncommon um, assessment when you see this color. However, uh, we're talking about a dry French rosé. Again, dry just means not, not sweet. But I refer to rosé as being sunshine trapped in a bottle. Um, it has a foot both in the white and the red uh, winemaking world that starts as a red wine. However, they bleed the juice off the skin and get these beautiful, beautiful colors. Um, this is the wonderful Lopal, um, produced in, in Comte de Provence. So if you've ever read Peter Mayle, A Year in Provence, this is what we're talking about. Um, gorgeous, 
fresh, bright, berries in a bowl, strawberry, cranberry, raspberry, cherry, a little bit of herbaceousness, and the principal great bread on this is going to be Grenache, and just a beautiful, beautiful, burnished, almost a copper yeah. orange color. Fantastic pairing one with Thanksgiving. And then moving on now into the red realm, um, taking you to uh, another French wine yeah. that typically is associated with Beaujolais Nouveau. This is a, a, a Beaujolais wine from France, from the Burgundy region. However, instead of being sourced far and wide in terms of where the fruit comes from, uh, we're in a very, very tiny geographic designation which we refer to as being a crew. And in fact, for this one, we're talking about a single vineyard site, Chateau des Ressiers. Wow. Um, the crew of Rini, of which there are only 10 designations, names like Moulinavon, Fleury, Julianas, saint Amour, and they all hover in northern Beaujolais, where they have a wonderful soil profile of manganese, granite, and schist, very, very similar to what you find in Portugal. And it imparts a wonderful minerality, a very, very bright, fresh fruit component profile in between like a Pinot Noir and a Merlot. Wonderful floral essence and then very, very bright, fresh berry fruit. So this is basically from a smaller Very, very minor. tiny, very, very small vineyard. How many bottles would you say they produce? That, like that's a great question. I mean, we're talking about the Fessy family that they've been making wine since 1888. I don't know the exact production numbers. They're not huge. Um, and for 09, which is a monumental vintage for, for Beaujolais, incredible wines. And, and wonderful with your principal proteins. Turkey, ham, pork tenderloin, you name it. I'll reemphasize with, with the Fessy, this is a great wine for your non-red wine wine drinker. It is low tannin, high fruit, very floral, softer in terms of, 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 of alcohol content, it's very, very moderate, and, and lack of wood too. It's a great wine for the individual who's, who's, who's enjoying rosé and wants to take a step into red. It falls right in between a Pinot Noir or a Merlot. On to a personal favorite, and this is the third time I've used this wine. This is Lucarelli, and we're going to Italy now. Um, Primitivo is the distant cousin over the water to California's Red Zinfandel. They, they've got the same DNA profile. Um, research now says that our modern day Red Zinfandel actually comes full circle from Croatia uh, in terms of, you know, the, 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 uh, the, 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 uh, the family tree I should use. Um, it's, a, it's a parentage of two grapes from Croatia called Plavik Mali and Dobrik. But then the, the granddaddy that they now think is our Red Zinfandel is Castellans, Castellancy Kroneljak. It's a big, huge name for a great bridal. But that's where we think our modern Red Zinfandel comes from in California. And this is the Italian version of it. Plummy, boysenberry, blackberry. But you're in Apulia, the heel of the boot of Italy. So you're, you're surrounded on three sides by water, the Tyrrhenian, Mediterranean, Ionian seas. So there's a wonderful acid profile and a lovely hint of spice and earth. There's some black licorice with a black pepper grilling spice and then very, very bright acid. So again, if you're going to be doing more of the pork tenderloin or the beef tenderloin, or even if you're doing a richer turkey preparation, gorgeous red. And again, a great, a great wine for the red wine drinker who is new to red wine. Uh, last to round out, um, our group of seven is the wonderful Petite Syrah Port by Bogle. Um, this is going to be the only sweet wine of the bunch. Um, and the sweet comes through manipulation. Um, if you take a fermenting beverage, uh, and if you add to it neutral raw alcohol, raw grape spirit, you boost alcohol content, stopping fermentation because the fermentation yeast dies, you retain residual sugar, and you boost alcohol. So you have fortified. This is 20%. Wow. It's a little bit hotter, but it doesn't taste it doesn't taste like a vodka shot or a tequila shot or a gin martini. But it's it's got some mouthfeel and texture, it's heavier, it's weightier. Bogle uh, makes, in my opinion, one, one of the finest California ports on the planet. Uh, it's a ruby style, meaning that the color is more of that ruby, bright, uh, shiny texture, similar to your sweater there, maybe a little darker. But Petite Syrah, 
uh, is a wonderful spicy rich fruit forward grape. This is a state produced. Uh, they own the vineyard for Ranch. This began as a three barrel project. It's now 120, about 3,000 cases, 2007. So again, a state produced wine for 20 bucks, less than 5,000 cases. It's a 500 milliliter format, so it's bigger than a 375, but smaller than a 750. Perfect to share amongst four to six people. Cheers. So I'll recap the last one that we tried. Um, again, the Bogo Petit Syrah Port. And this is, uh, the, the design of this wine is to go with dessert or have it as a dessert by itself. Um, this will pair beautifully with pumpkin pie, pecan pie, anything fruit-based by itself. It's dynamite with chocolate. So if you're doing a bundt cake or chocolate brownie sundae with drizzle this, blah, blah, that, um, a beautiful, beautiful uh, pairing. Uh, I'll just quickly recap everything. François uh, Monton, Brut Sparkling Wine from France. Gisa Gay La Petite Perrier uh, from France, Sauvignon Blanc. Beautiful off dry German Riesling by Saint Urban Top, uh, 2010. Uh, wonderful French Dry Rosé from Grenache, Le Paul, Saint Tropez, Côte de Provence. Beautiful Lucrele Primitivo, 2010. Uh, outstanding um, Chateau de Reyes, Henri Fassi. Uh, Beaujolais Cru 2009 and the Bogue Petit Port 2007. If those that are interested, all these wines are available to taste the entire month of November. However, on the 16th, which is a Wednesday, uh, not next week but the week after, we're doing a tasting on our patio on the east side. Uh, we'll feature all seven wines. You will have past appetizers uh, and it is completely free. Uh, also for December, We'll be featuring sparkling wines, plus gift wines as well. I'll probably have seven sparkling wines, three to three to five gift wines as well. Um, a little bit higher price points on the gift wines, but this will eliminate trying instead of trying to slog through all the traffic and craziness uh, of trying to find the perfect gift. Uh, you and I were talking yes. about. Wine does a lot. Yes, and for um, parents that for have parents. everything. Yes, 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 yes. So come, come see, come see me over here. Yes. I'm here uh, typically five nights a week until about eight p.m. Okay. So right. keep us in mind, and then keep the sixteenth in mind. Should you come on the sixteenth, just RSVP. All you need is a name and number in your group, and the number here is three two seven four two four six. That's three two seven four two four six to RSVP and we'll post the more detailed notes. I think I know Yes, absolutely. Thank you, Nathan. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Cheers.